Hey there, and welcome to Kujo Sound for another video about game audio. You're listening to the voice of Bjorn Jacobson. In my recent video about Horizon Zero Dawn, I talked briefly about occlusion and gates. After that video, I was specifically asked by some viewers and a friend how that actually worked. Specifically, one person mentioned that he liked the video, but he is a non-audio or non-game dev person. And me mentioning gates and occlusion didn't explain much to how that actually worked, and he was interested in knowing so. So this will be a video about how such things as occlusion and gates work. In this video, I'll be talking about a couple of things, which is often called different things in different engines or at different offices. Like, I usually call it an audio emitter, but some call it an audio source. I've even heard some people call it an audio entity or an audio locator. Don't get confused by these words, as they all mean the same, which is where the sound is coming from. And I also tend to shift between which word I use to describe it myself, so don't get confused. Now let's get to it. At first, let's look up in the dictionary on what these words actually mean. Occlusion, which is another word for block or to block something. A medical description that I found in a dictionary says that this is something that blocks a tube or an opening in the body or when a blood clot occurs and blocks the passage of blood in your veins kind of gory. And a gate is a part of a fence or wall that is fixed to either side and can be opened or closed. Basically, in a gate is an opening which allows for something to pass or not to pass. And the word gate can be a little bit misleading because it's quite often used to describe this, but some also call it occlusion filter or audio passing area, audio control surface, and so on. But let's stick to calling it audio gates. An occlusion system to control the behavior of your sounds is extremely useful in game development, especially when working in a 3D environment. A very simple and common way of using occlusion is to simply calculate if there is something between the source of the sound and you as a listener. Like this. At first we may have a sound placed at any given point in the world. We have determined that it should be audible within a range of 100 meters, and we have decided that it, over this distance, should behave in a certain way. This can be set with a so-called attenuation curve. In this first example here, there's nothing in between us as a listener and the sound. Setting up an attenuation curve is basically identical across all engines and platforms. This is Unity. This is Unreal Engine. And here is FMOD. All kind of similar in setting up a curve like this. And here is a setup from the audio middleware engine WISE. We control how the sound shall behave over at a given distance so if we walk closer to the source of the sound, it will be louder, or it can even be lower if that's what we want. Or how the various filters of specific frequencies should behave when we get closer or further away, such as high passing or low passing. It could be very useful if we want the sound of a party in our game to become more and more muffled in the distance as we walk away from the source, but not necessarily lower its volume, or lower its volume and not muffle it. Well, let's go back to the more straight lines here, as it will be easier to explain. We have our audio emitter with a sound that is audible 100 meters away. But let's say there's something in between us and the source, then we might not want it to be audible through that object, like if a wall would be between us. So we set up a rule saying that if there is something between the source and the listener, the sound is occluded and doesn't go any further. Or we can set up a rule that says that whenever a sound is blocked and should be occluded, it should not happen instantly, but be occluded by having a small fade out over a certain distance, like 5 meters from its point of occlusion. How can this be useful? Let me show you a little bit from the latest Hitman game. The reason why I'm showing you this specific game and example is because I worked on this specific game and I worked on and helped set up some of the rules and actually this specific level that I'm about to show you. Here we have the level of Sapienza and during hello? gameplay there is of course a lot going on under the hood that you as a player do not see and you shouldn't see it either. Like all 3D audio emitters and sounds in this game have a set attenuation telling it how far from the source we are allowed to hear the sound. There is also a line calculated from all emitters to the listener, which in this case is the main character's body. Like this guy speaking right here. A line goes from his emitter 
which in this case is what he is saying to our listener. If that line at any point in time during his speaking is blocked, we apply a filter to the sound, also known as we occluded. So whenever he walks behind this pillar here and our line becomes blocked, we muffle his voice slightly. You do know that this is 79, right? Vintage year, nine, right? Vintage year, pretty goddamn expensive. Yeah, I do. Got it from Caruso's private stash. Are you trying to get fired? As a matter of fact, that's exactly what I'm doing. Okay. Look, I'm, I'm on a two- This is an example of an occlusion of something as ordinary as a moving 3D sound. But what if it's something else like a room tone or some sounds of machinery or the party that I mentioned earlier? Here we have Unity, and this is one of the free levels that can be downloaded in their asset store. Don't worry, I'm not going to start coding and showing off how this can be set up. It's strictly for explanatory purposes. Take a look at this building here. Let's say that just like in the Hitman example of the NPC speaking, but his voice was blocked by the pillar and therefore occluded, we want to control where sounds can pass through without being occluded, or we want sounds to come from a specific place. If we have a sound emitter within this house, it could be some NPCs speaking or just some sounds of something inside here, like machinery, and this sound is only audible when inside this house. But there is an opening here, like this garage door here is open and we want the sound of the machinery or the voices to come out of here. This is where we place a gate to control that all sounds from within this house shall pass through here. So instead of our 100 meter attenuation curve from before, which would mean that the sound would be audible in a 100 meter radius from its location, now because of our occlusion rules, it is now only audible when inside the building, or through the gate that we set up. This works by instead of calculating the distance between the emitter and us as the listener, we calculate the actual distance between the emitter to the gate and then to the listener. Again, this is very useful for us to gain control over our sound's behavior. If we have a sound source placed anywhere in our game, and we as a listener is also present in this game, but we have a big wall between us, the sound should not be audible because the wall will occlude our sound. But let's say down the wall is a door opening. We can set up our gate here, which will allow for our sound to place through it and then to us. So even if we are actually 5 meters apart, because the gate is placed 20 meters away from both the source and us as a listener, we calculate the distance through this line instead of the straight one. So instead of our sound being played like it's 5 meters away, it sounds like it's 40 meters away. And in our 3D game environment, we will perceive the sound as coming through the door opening, which will make our soundscape much more believable. This is very useful, and exactly like the example I mentioned in the Horizon Zero Dawn video, I have linked it in the description, that the sound of a crowd in a busy city should come from the big door opening, which leads to the area of the crowd, instead of just coming as a straight line from the crowd's location to the player, through the wall and everything. This is what leads me to believe that there is some sort of occlusion control going on in the Horizon Zero Dawn video as we approach the crowd within this city. And Let's go back to user. Hitman and Sapienza a little again here. In this example, we have a building here. And if you think about what I just explained about the gates, about the garage, it should be fairly clear that the point of the gates is to control where the sounds are coming from. So instead of all the sounds just coming from various sources inside the house directly to the player, we want it to behave more naturally and come from the actual openings of the house. So there are gates placed on all these openings. Windows, doors, everything. In this specific example as well, these gates can be controlled by a lot of parameters, just as anything else in a game environment can be controlled. So a gate on a door is connected to the physical door in the game, and just like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, that occlusion doesn't necessarily mean that the sound should stop and go away immediately, it can also mean that we can control how fast it should stop, or other kinds of behavior. It also means that we in this specific situation can set up a gate which does one action when the door is closed, but another one when the door is physically open. Yeah, no, just, just hear me out. This is nothing like last time. 
Notice in this example that when the door is closed, the sounds from inside this cafe are muffled and has certain filters, and are obviously occluded because of the walls blocking the audio sources in their path to us as a player. But as we open the door, the sounds are unoccluded because I, as the developer of this specific level, has set the specific gate on this specific door to behave like this. It is also very useful here in another part of the Hitman Sapienza level to control something that is much more subtle. Here we have a setup of a small indoor environment in a castle tower, but as we approach this broken part of the tower, I have set up a gate that allows for all sounds from the outside environment to bleed through here. And not only that, only the bleed through in a very specific manner, so that it's only bleeding through within a certain distance of the gate, even though the sound may have an attenuation that says it should be heard miles away. So as we walk away, it is no longer audible. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, occlusions and gates are very important ways of controlling your sound's behavior, especially in bigger 3D environments like this, where you want to control certain sounds and you want them to control how they bleed through small holes in walls or doors or openings. So a small summary of how it works here, if we have a sound emitter which plays a sound directly to us, it will be audible like this. But if the sound is blocked, the sound is inaudible to us or muffled depending on our occlusion settings. Which leads us to that we can place a gate on the wall and tell the gate specifically that if a sound passes through this wall, it shall do so with a specific occlusion setting. This could be that the sound should be played unhindered through the wall, or it should be muffled, or that the sound should, once it passes through the gate, only be audible the next 20 meters. This gate can also be variable, like a door is open or closed, and the behavior when closed is set to instantly shut off the sound, but when open, the sound bleeds through it. And that is roughly how occlusion works. It occludes a sound if it needs to be so. Gates are used to control this occlusion and from where a sound is perceived to come from. This all helps create a not only easier to control game environment, but also gives you a much smoother experience to you as a player. That being said, that I obviously don't know how such gates or systems are set up specifically in other games than the ones I have worked on myself, and all games are made differently. But in the end, we all try to achieve the same, which is control and power to control the soundscape, which allows for us as sound designers to create a better sounding end game. That's it for this video. And if you liked it and hopefully learned something about occlusion and gates and other things, then why not hit the like button? And if you haven't already done so, why not subscribe to my channel for a constant flow of videos on how to do game audio. If you found this useful and you would like to see more content like this, why not head over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound and subscribe there, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel and help me afford the time I take off to create this content. Sign up on Patreon and you also gain access to supervision, mentoring and sparring on your current project or if you have any specific questions that you want me to help you with. If you have any comments about this video or stuff that you want to have explained, you're more than welcome to fire away in the comment section below and let's get the discussion rolling. Thank you once again for watching, Kujo Sound signing out.